So intercompany inventory, parent and sub, when they sell to each other, is a hot topic on the CPA FAR exam. So if the parent corp owns 100%, or even if they own 80% of the stock of the sub, you have this issue. Whenever the parent sells inventory to the sub or the sub sells inventory to the parent, it doesn't matter which direction. It's the same issue. So the parent in this example is going to sell inventory that costs them 800000 to the sub for 900000 And there's going to be a $100,000 profit on the sale. But this is a wholly owned subsidiary and you can't show profit of that 100000 None of the inventory purchased by the sub was sold yet to outsiders by December 31st, year one. So they bought the inventory from the parent. They still have it as of the end of the year. And that's important to know whether they still have it or not, because that's going to show you how you're going to eliminate that $100,000 profit. So first, the journal entries that were made by the separate companies go to 170. So the parent debited accounts receivable, credited intercompany sales, 900000 That's on the parent's separate books. And then debited intercompany cost of goods sold and credited inventory for 800000 That's on the parent's separate books. Now the journal entry to record the purchase by the sub on the sub separate books. Debit inventory, credit accounts payable, but notice 900000 Well, it's the same company. So how could one have inventory at 800000 and the other one have inventory 900000 I understand why, because they paid 900000 for it, the sub did, but it's the same entity. So we can't just magically write up the value of that inventory by 100000 just because we moved it from the parent's warehouse to the sub's warehouse. Or maybe we didn't even move it at all. Maybe it's still in the warehouse and we just recorded the sale. You can't just make a profit that way. Remember, this is a common entity owned by the parent. So the key is there's a $100,000 profit that needs to be eliminated. And where do we eliminate it from? Well, it says all the inventory, none of it's been sold yet. So all the inventory is still with the sub that they bought from the parent. They still have it all. They haven't sold any of it yet, which makes it easy to eliminate it. Go to 171. Here's how we'll eliminate that 100000 We'll just credit inventory of the sub for 100000 because that's where it all is. And that puts the inventory right back to $800,000, does not it? So on the consolidated work paper, we make this entry. Not on the separate books, but on the consolidated work paper, we make this entry on 171. Debit intercompany sales, 900000 Credit intercompany cost of goods sold. 800,000 and credit inventory 100,000. And we can do that because it says all the inventory that was purchased is still with the sub. They haven't sold any of it to outsiders yet. So all that 100,000, we can just reduce inventory. But what if, go to 172, what if we're going to change one thing? Instead of none of the inventory was sold by year end, what if all of the inventory purchased by the sub was sold to outsiders by year end? They don't have any of it left. They bought it from the parent and sold it all by year end. How do we eliminate that 100000 We still have to eliminate it. Well, once again on 173, the separate entries, the parent will once again debit accounts receivable and credit intercompany sales for 900000 the parent will once again debit intercompany cost of goods sold and credit inventory for 800000 And the sub will once again on their separate books debit inventory for 900000 and credit accounts payable for 900000 And that's the problem. We can't have it at 900000 when it only costs the parent 800000 But this time we're assuming the sub sold all the inventory. They don't have any of it left. In fact, they sold it to outsiders and made a profit of a million four. So they would have debited the sub on their separate books. A million four accounts receivable, credit sales, a million four. Debit cost of goods sold for what they paid, 900000 And credit inventory, 900000 So now the inventory is all gone. The inventory for the sub, it's in and out on their separate books. You see the red entries for 900000 
inventory in, inventory out, 900,000. The sub's got none of that inventory left as of year end. Instead, all of it's in cost of goods sold now. But the problem is cost of goods sold shouldn't be 900,000. It should only be what? 800,000. So go to the next slide. You'll see how we're going to eliminate that 100,000. Same thing on the work papers, not in the separate books, but on the work papers, we're going to debit intercompany sales, 900,000, credit intercompany cost of goods sold, 800,000, and another credit to cost of goods sold for 100,000 because all the inventory's been sold now. So we don't credit inventory this time for 100,000. We credit cost of goods sold for 100,000, and that's the only difference between this elimination and the one we did a few minutes back when they still had all the inventory we were able to just credit inventory. Now we can't do that because the sub doesn't have any of the inventory left. They sold it all. All right, any questions on when they sell all of it or when they sell none of it? If they sell none of it, we credit inventory for the 100000 If they sell all of it, we credit cost of goods sold for the 100000 Now you know what they're going to do on a CPA exam. Go to 175. What if they sold some of it, not all of it? But at least we know what to do. Now we just have to adjust. We have to allocate to a percentage, a pro rata, something fancy. But we started with something easy, so we understood it. Now we can get a little fancier. Parent owns 100% of the stock again. They sold inventory again with a cost of 800000 to the sub for 900000 Some of the intercompany inventory was sold by year end. Ah, some of it was. Not all of it, not none of it. Some of it. The year one inventory of the sub included goods purchased from the parent for 540000 So 540 of the 900000 is still in inventory. That means the other 360000 must have been sold. Does that make sense? Because that's where we got to start out here. The fact that some of it is still with us, most of it is still here with the sub, 540 of the 900,000 is still in inventory, 360 was sold. So 540 over 900, that percentage, we're going to reduce from inventory. 360 over 900, that percentage, we're going to reduce from cost of goods sold. The rest of it is just a repeat, go to 176. Once again, intercompany sales on the parent's separate books. Same entry we made before. And the sub, same entry as before. Debit inventory, credit accounts payable, 900000 So everything's there as exactly as we saw. But this time on 177, some of the inventory purchased from the parent was sold as of year end. But 540000 of the 900 is still on hand, and the same 100000 needs to be eliminated, but we're going to have to eliminate it from two places this time. Some of the 100,000 is going to be eliminated from cost of goods sold, whatever was sold, that percentage. And whatever wasn't sold, that percentage is going to be a reduction of subsidiary inventory. Just a matter of a pro rata calculation. You can see it on 178. So the ending inventory percentage is 60%, 540 over 900. The cost of goods sold elimination is 40%, 360 over 900. That same 100,000, we're going to just take it from two different places. We're going to reduce inventory by 60,000 and cost of goods sold by 40,000. And that's how we're going to get rid of that 100,000. And it'll look like this on 179. Intercompany sales, debit for 900,000. Credit intercompany cost of goods sold, that doesn't change. Those two, the first debit and the first credit are the same. It's these next two credits. That's new. Cost of goods sold, the sub, we have to eliminate 40,000 of the 100 from there. The other 60,000 of the 100,000 reduces the sub's inventory. And that's considered one of the tougher questions on a CPA exam. Want to see one? All right, let's take a look at the next slide. Pinto Company had the following transactions with its affiliate Sting in year one. I like when the parents a P and the subs an S. 
So parent has the following transactions with the sub. They purchase raw materials from their sub. And remember I said it doesn't matter whether the parent's the seller or the parent's the buyer. It's the same issue. This time the parent's the buyer, but that's okay. Purchases raw materials totaling 240 from the sub. The sub's wholly owned. Wouldn't matter if it was 80%. You'd still do the same thing. And the sub's gross profit on the sale was 48000 So 48000 in this question is the same as the 100000 was in our previous question, you see. This time it's that 48000 that we've got to eliminate. Now, if all of it's been sold, then we can eliminate all 48000 from cost of goods sold. If all of it's still there, then we can eliminate all 48000 from inventory. What do they tell us? Parent had 60000 of the 240000 remaining at December 31st. They still had one-fourth in inventory, which means three-fourths had to have been sold. If they have 60 over 240 remaining, then 180 over 240 must be sold. How much of the intercompany profit, 48000 should be allocated to reduce the consolidated inventory account? So how much is coming out of inventory? Whatever's still there, 60 over 240, one fourth of 48,000 is going to be a reduction of inventory. 12,000 is a reduction of inventory. And there's all your entries on 181. So the sub's own books, that, because they're the seller this time, so they're going to debit accounts receivable, credit intercompany sales, and then cost of goods sold and inventory for the sub. If they made a 48,000 profit, then they must have had a cost of 192. And in the parents' own books, they paid 240. But we have to eliminate the 48,000 depending on what's still there and what's been sold. 25% is still there. We'll eliminate inventory for 12,000. The other 75%. Must have been sold. We'll eliminate cost of goods sold for 36. And that's the kind of question you got to be able to do. That's a real higher order question right there. One of the tougher ones you'll see.